Hello, Internet! So today I'm going to tell you about three plants in the blueberry family. So the blueberry family is called Ariaceae, and it's actually quite a large family. So right now it's mid-June, which is the height of mountain laurel season. If you look behind me, all these white flowers here are mountain laurels. Today I learned this thing about mountain laurel which just blew my mind, and I had to share it with you. So mountain laurel flowers are pretty unique in that they're decahedron shaped. They're, they look like a platonic solid. They've got all of these angles and they're 10 sided. And I never knew why, and today I learned. The reason why mountain laurel flowers have angles is that there's a stamen, a pollen bearing structure that kind of sticks itself into each one of the angles and it's spring loaded. So each stamen is like stuck in the base of the petal and, and it grows and there's all this potential energy and it just wants to burst out. So what happens when an insect like a bee or a moth lands on the flower is it sets off like a, a spring loaded trap. The stamen release from their little spring loaded geometrical cage and spray pollen all over the insect. So this is an adaptation by the mountain laurel to make sure that its pollen gets where it needs to be and it's pretty damn cool. All right, let me zoom in on a flower for you. Okay, so look at this flower. The stamen on this flower all used up. So you can see how they've all sort of gone into the center there, right? And so that means that they've already done their spring-loaded thing and sent pollen onto some pollinator that landed on this flower. But now, look at this flower. Can you see how all the stamen are sort of tucked into the corners in those little red dots? That's the spring-loaded part. And if I'm really careful, I can keep the camera in focused and set off the trap for you. Okay, ready? Here it goes. So I'm using this stick to trigger the stamens to spring. Did you see that? Let's try it in slow motion. There's a white blurb that's here, then here, then here, then here. That's pollen. Let's watch it again. Now at full speed, repeated. What I could see with the naked eye was that there were actually like snowballs of pollen that the mountain laurel was shooting at me when I poked it with my stick. It was so cool! It was so cool! So if you live in New England, you should go out right now or next year, I guess, and, uh, and, and, and test this out. It's, it's a really special thing. Okay, now on to the next Ariaceae plant. So the next blueberry-like plant that I want to show you is really tiny. It grows on the forest floor and it's called wintergreen. Let me show it to you. So here is wintergreen. There's a number of individuals here. You can count them by the berries. I see one, two, three, four. Four little wintergreen plants. Here, let me, let me pick one for you. Up. So the first thing you might say is, that can't be related to blueberry. Those berries are red. It has to be related to red berry. But if you look closely, especially look at this big plump one. So you can see that kind of a crown shape with the little stem and then almost like a floral pattern on the top of the berry. That's exactly what blueberries are like if you look closely at blueberries. So these are very, very closely related kinds of plants. So wintergreen gets its name because it's green all year round. Mountain laurel actually is also green all year round. They've got a waxy coating on their leaves which lets them photosynthesize in the winter, which is pretty cool. And the crazy thing about these berries, these berries ripen in like late May or June, but the berries too are available all year round. They're, they're not very juicy, they're actually like pretty hard, kind of mealy, so they're not very sweet, but they taste really good. They taste almost like root beer, and they dry quite well, so you can take a bunch of berries and dry them, and then like a few months later boil them into tea, and you'll get like root beer flavored tea. It's pretty cool. So these berries will ripen in the summer and then they'll just sort of hang out on the understory uh, all year round. And so you'll see birds eating them like really, really late, like in February. And that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. You know, it's nice to have, have some fresh berries in February, I think so. Now onto our last plant in the Ariaceae blueberry family. So the last plant in the blueberry family we're gonna look at today is, you guessed it, blueberry. Let's take a look. So here's a wild blueberry plant. Let me see if I can zoom in on the berries for you. 
check out these blueberries. Now they're green, so they're still a little immature, but you can see they've got the same kind of rosette flower structure on the top of them that the winter green berries did. So you can tell that these plants are closely related. So on my way here, I've picked samples of all these plants, so let's compare them now. Let's start with mountain laurel. So here are the mountain laurel flowers, and you can see in the immature ones just like how geometrical they are. Like they look like Dungeons and Dragons dice or something. And the reason why they're so geometrical is that they need those harsh angles in order to have a place for their stamen to kind of load their springs so that they can spread their pollen far and wide. So there you've got form and function in a very unique looking flower. Here are the leaves to mountain laurel. You can see that they're, they're pretty waxy and have a sort of pointed oval shape. Now compare that to the leaves of the wintergreen. So the wintergreen leaves are also really waxy and have a kind of pointed oval shape. They're a little darker green, uh, but you can tell that these two plants are really, really closely related. Now compare the wintergreen leaves to these blueberry leaves. Now the blueberry leaves are a little lighter and a little bit more delicate because blueberries lose their leaves in the winter time. They're not covered in wax. But again, you've got this pointed oval structure that indicates that all three of these plants are closely related. And they're growing in a very similar habitat too. Now you probably can't tell this, but I'm actually on the top of a, a little mountain here. And that's the kind of environment that the blueberry family has sort of carved out for itself in North America. They like rather dry, hot places and they tend to acidify the soil. So you often find Ariaceae with pines. And it kind of makes sense that you would find three closely related species growing in a similar habitat. Chances are there was one ancestral species a long time ago that started growing in this habitat and then it diversified to fill little micro niches but all of those micro niches were in the same larger habitat, which in this case is a like kind of drier temperate forest. Did I mention Ariaceae like acidic soil? If I didn't, they do. Yeah. Check it out. I am on the top of a mountain. Some old revolutionary war man lived in a house up here. The house is long gone. The chimney still stands. And this was his view. Wow. Let's go back. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a nice view. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and learn more about plants and things, you should hit the subscribe button and then I'll talk to you more frequently. Yeah, bye.